Thank you much. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, okay. Well, we start with our forward-looking statements, and this is really my opportunity to remind everybody that uh, we are at an early-stage exploration play, so uh, considered very high risk. Obviously, hoping very high reward as well, but uh, I think it's really important people understand where we are in the exploration phase. So we are a diamond explorer focused on uh, in Northwest Australia. The company was formed a couple of years ago uh, in mid-2016 specifically to acquire and explore this project, which is, again, located in Northwestern Australia in the Kimberley region. So uh, we have 100% of the project. There are no underlying royalties. Uh, we have a 1,500 square kilometer uh, exploration license block or block of exploration licenses. Um, Australia is obviously a, a jurisdiction that inspires confidence in the investor and that has really enabled us to raise the money and move the company forward. Uh, we have uh, a very low share count because we're a very new company and some fantastic investors, uh, including Eric Sprott and, uh, and Rosso Asset Management, which own collectively 25% of the company. Uh, and, uh, and I have a fair big stake in the company as well as I was one of the founders um, and, and moving it forward. So uh, we because we're where we are and because of the fantastic infrastructure that there's actually a road that goes into the property, we're on tide water, we can explore this property relatively inexpensively compared to many of the other jurisdictions that diamond exploration is conducted. So we're looking for diamonds. The best the place where you look for diamonds are in what's called kimberlites. And kimberlites are a volcano, a rare type of volcano, that tend to occur in clusters or fields. A field of kimberlites might be a few kimberlites, you know, five or six, or more than 100. Uh, and as an example, the Acadie field, which uh, housed Canada's first diamond mine, there are 150 kimberlites in that field. So, you know, we're, we're looking for these, uh, these so-called kimberlites. Uh, and we have very strong evidence, and the reason that we acquired the property because we had this very strong evidence that there's a field of diamond bearing kim kimberlites on the property that we acquired. So what does success look like? Well, this is a, a chart of through the discovery process of the junior uh, exploration company that had a minority stake in Canada's first diamond mine. That was a company called Diamet Minerals. And it's worth taking a few minutes just to look at this because that stock went from 65 cents to $65 in a matter of 18 months. And that was really based on the discovery of kimberlites and the fact that they were diamond bearing. The mine itself, which is in the Arctic barren lands, so it's a very expensive place to operate, cost $900 million to build, and that was paid off with profits in 18 months. So it was making $600 million a year. So these things can be incredibly profitable and valuable if you can find one. And certainly that's, that's the holy grail for the diamond explorer is to have a chart that looks something like this. Well, um, this is a picture of our land package. As I mentioned, we have 1,500 square kilometers. We acquired the land based on the scientific and uh, evidence that we had that there was a diamond-bearing cluster of kimberlites here. We already have an agreement with the local traditional owners, the Aboriginal group, which are called the Balangara. They participate in our exploration program, so we're well situated uh, with respect to the uh, to the local traditional owners in the area. And, and of course, we have 100% of the project, as I mentioned. Um, based on the results and the early results that we've had on the property, we've actually uh, had a competitor company come in and stake the ground all around us. So we've actually created our first area play. And again, that was really based on uh, our, our, the, the fact that we drilled kimberlite in our very first drill program, which was conducted this year. So I mentioned the company was very new. We formed it as a private company in mid-2016 just to acquire this property. Uh, the company was able to establish enough of the direct evidence of the presence of kimberlite and diamonds on the property that we were able to take the company public just under a year ago in late 20, uh, November of 2017. At that point, we raised $5 million on the go public transaction. We still have about two, of that, uh, two million of that money left. Uh, the rest of that money was spent on getting public and then uh, and launching our field program, which was conducted between July and September of this year. And in that project, uh, in that program, we were uh, successfully intersected our first Kimberlite. Um, I think one of the things that's really important to, to point out here are some of our shareholders. As I mentioned, we have Rosso Asset Management and Eric Sprott own 25% uh, of the company. They've been very supportive of the company and will continue to fund the company on a pro rata basis going forward. So we have that sort of, that much desired lead order in any future financings that we might enter into. 
a lot of experience in the group, uh, and I won't dwell too much on this, uh, but I was involved in the discovery of Canada's first diamond mine, which is why I keep bringing it up. And, and really, it was that experience and understanding uh, how the exploration goes and what's important when you're looking for diamonds that uh, really led, for us, led us to acquire the property that we did in Australia, because the, the, the diamond sign or the technical evidence that we had that there was a diamond-bearing cluster of kimberlites here was very strong. And that really is, uh, comes back to the experience that uh, I've had and some of the colleagues that I've brought into the company uh, with the understanding of how diamonds are formed and where we should be looking for them. So I mentioned that we have, uh, we drilled our first kimberlite. Uh, that happened in September of this year. So this is, a, a, this is an enormously important event in the exploration process. Because no, no, this kimberlite in its, of itself may be very important. Uh, it's at the lab now. We're expecting results in about a month. And that'll give our first indications of how, how diamondiferous this particular kimberlite is. But more importantly, it's really confirmation that we do have a field of diamond-bearing kimberlites here or at least a field of kimberlites, we believe they will be diamond bearing and we'll hope that the lab results will bear that out. But so the discovery of this first kimberlite in our first drill program, which I think is remarkable given that the company is very new, we've uh, we really just launched and we were able to discover this kimberlite in the very first program, it's very significant. Again, not just because of the kimberlite in and of itself, which may be an important kimberlite, We'll see what the results have to say. But really, it speaks to the perspective nature of the project that we have. And again, we have 1,500 square kilometers. So we're pretty confident that we managed to capture the entire field. Uh, of course, that will be borne out with the drilling program as we go forward. Um, the, we're not just, uh, we just haven't got the one Kimberlite. We have developed several other targets that we hope to be drill testing in the next uh, 12 months. We are launching into uh, our field season probably in April or May of next year. Uh, and we're developing targets to continue that drilling. Again, to try to determine how big is this cluster of Kimberlites, how many are there, where are they, and what is the diamond nature of each of these Kimberlites. Uh, 702 is a very important uh, target for us. It has amongst the best um, technical evidence of a, a diamond bearing kimberlite that I've seen in 25 years. So this is a very important target area and one that it, the investors who had put money into the company were very interested in this particular area, again, because of the strong evidence that if we can find the kimberlite associated with what we're, the, the indicator minerals and the boulders that we're finding here, we're quite certain that it will be very diamondiferous. So here we are on the timeline. Uh, again, it's been a very fast-paced uh, ev evolution of the company. Uh, the company, again, was formed in mid-2016. We, uh, we managed to establish that there were boulders on the property in the first year of the company's existence that were likely to be kimberlite. They had kimberlite indicator minerals in them. Those are minerals that are specific to kimberlite. And we actually um, sent a boulder in for analysis to recover kimberlite indicator minerals, and what we got were diamonds. And that's just about the best kimberlite indicator mineral there is out there. So that really helped to drive the stock forward and drive interest in the company, uh, and, and again, serve is that confirmation that we are onto a field of diamond bearing kimberlites. Um, as I mentioned, we drilled our first, uh, our first kimberlite in September of this year, so that's a huge milestone. We are now in the process of waiting for results. And the other thing that's really important is we're developing the, the targets that we'll have for drilling next year. Um, the, the plan is to have a fairly aggressive drill program. Test, um, we tested five targets in 2018. We hope to test three to four times as many in 2019. So a big effort is being put, pushed towards developing those targets. And it's a great time to be in diamonds. This is a chart of the, the forecasted diamond production going forward. And you'll notice that there's a pretty significant drop off. A lot of the mines that are in production right now are, are being depleted. Resources are going away. So the, the producers, the Rio Tentos, the BHPs, and some of the mid-tier producers like Lucara, Dominion Diamonds, Mountain Province, Gem Diamonds, are all aggressively looking for new assets to purchase. And uh, we, you know, our, our plan would be to, to make the discovery and, and hopefully enter into some sort of an agreement with a producer where they could take the thing forward or perhaps even buy the company on a go-forward basis. Um, that's a quick overview of the company. I've got 30 seconds left. So if you have any questions, please seek us out. I'm happy to talk about this. I could talk about it for hours, so be careful. Uh, and if you, uh, if you have questions, there's our email address and contact details. Please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much. Thank you.